this episode we get our engines fitted. We see this really big puffin, and then a man shows how to make bacon sandwiches. Hmm. <laughs> Well, good morning everyone and here we are again. It's uh, quarter past five. Jesus. And I uh, just got myself a coffee. Because today is a day. I choose the right gear to pick up my boat. <laughs> oh my god, I'm really drove into someone. If you're new here, my name's Dan, this is my brother Tim. This year we're going to be taking an Atlantic 75 rib around the UK. It's 2,000 miles, 20 days, and we've needed a bit of work doing to it. In the last video, you'd have seen that uh, we were taking it, or well, me and my friend Tom was taking it to uh, Wales, to Bill High Marine, to have the engines fitted and all the electronics fitted. So we're now on the way back to go and get it, which is quite exciting. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, by all accounts, it's looking amazing. So. Uh, Carry on watching this video and we'll see what it looks like. interesting this uh, project that you've got where, where did it come from well pulling enough about a year and a half ago I sat with my mate having a beer and I said you know I've never really done anything for charity you know 
you know, I've always wanted to take something like that and, and, and go. I've just thought I've always wanted to go around the coast. Mm. So then it was a case of finding the right the right boat for it. To be honest, um, so I hunted and hunted and then found this. And it was a spares boat behind the line down on the Isle of Wight. Mm. So I managed to uh, managed to get it. There were some bits missing, so we've had to put it together. The A bar is not the one that had on it. So that's right. not from this boat. Okay. Um, but it is off an Atlantic. Isn't but it's it? obviously from a 75. Yeah. Um, but uh, and then it was a case of uh, yeah, it was literally found it. Obviously, as you know, had <laughs> no engines. Yeah, yeah. We're we're lucky to uh, to help dispose of all the RNLI's uh, finished engines. So we go through with every single one with a fine tooth comb. The D class yeah. is a smaller one. Then it goes. And then yeah. the, they've got they've got the bigger one with the the 40s and 50s. And then the Atlantic 75, that usually has the 75 horsepower Yamahas yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, and we've we've got rid of all them. the 90s. Uh, well, the 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 R and L I use the 75 twin all 75s the always. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, they do. Um, but because the 75 um, A 75 is being uh, kind of phased out and has been being phased out yeah, for the yeah. past Can't be many left, eight, 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 eight years I think there are thereabouts to, in favour of the 8.5 metre um, we've had a lot more of the 75 horsepower two stroke yams but these 115s uh, that are on this they, they, they tend to be that little bit smoother quite a lot better on fuel which I think was one part of the remit that you that's needed right, wasn't it? That's right, that's right um, and I've been told it's about half a litre difference maybe over a mile is that right? Could it be with these twins that? if you're cruising at say 20 knots you will you'll realize the benefit of, of at least half a litre a mile and the count rotator as well is that going to give me about 20 percent it more should efficiency? do yeah between between 10 and 30 percent depending on the hull actually if you if you've got twin screws and they, they're they're opposing and um, then it's it's they reckon it's as efficient there or thereabouts as a single outboard engine whereas twin engines that are rotating in the same direction if it's a mono hull they, they're not that efficient at all um, so the RNLI actually use uh, the right hand rotation engines on, on both on the same Do they? boat yeah even with the 8.5 meter with these 115s so what you've got here is actually better than the RNLI. Well funny you know because, well it's funny because um, I know a guy in the RNLI and he's they've got an Atlantic 85 and he said when I was look, sourcing at finding the boat and he said an ideal boat would be the 75 with yeah. the 85 engines yeah. and as soon as he said it yeah. my mind was going you know I was yeah. like that's what I've got to do then if that's, that's what yeah. if that's what a guy in the RNLI is saying and they use them all the time so I'm, I'm really interested to see what's going to go yeah, like I'll be honest really well. uh, I know you said it's not got much of a, a like a plane and pad on the bottom um, you said it's not that it's not it's, it's a bit heavy as well yeah, they're, they're a heavy boat aren't they're, they're they? a four wheel drive boat yeah they're the tank of the water they say don't that's they that's exactly what they yeah. are yeah they're tractors it will just go through anything you want yeah. to throw at it yeah and it's not designed to be fast but with these you know 230 horsepower on the back she'll certainly pick her feet up and there is a bit of a planing pad um, so yeah difficult to guesstimate speed but you'll be you'll be above 40 knots is, do you think yeah I would say so I mean, again, I'm not really so much worried about the top end speed. For me, it is more about the efficiency and just a bit of power to get you out of a bit of trouble. Or if we do go in a bit of rough water, I know I've got a little bit in, in, in reserve, you know, like just to... The two keys, because obviously this would have been two strokes, so that's where the chokes would have gone. That's right, uh, yes. For the engine, so you guys have put a key, so that's obviously a key for each engine now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's great. You said you got the, the depth sounder and that um, going for me. Yes. Um, so that's great. So now I've got that one for the helmsman, and then also we've got the one for the chart plotter as well and that's this uh, the chart plotter that we've had fitted is the um, Ray Marine RV isn't it yep. um, so this is the real vision the, uh, the Ra real Marine, it, yeah. uh, Ray Marine uh, that's what you, you spec'd and it's, it's a fantastic piece of kit yeah I mean again I haven't yeah. used one so I'm hoping it's going to be a, a nice bit of kit but by all accounts it looks great so um, so there's now um, there's now uh, a transponder on the back is that what you're going to call it the transducer transducer on the back Trans sorry transducer on the back so that's good um, so we've got so there's one this one is mounted to the actual hull of the boat, isn't it? It's like yeah. a, 
comes uh, through the mob, yeah. Yeah, but we just have to be careful, obviously, the one in the back. And then, and then with regards to like um, the Balfour, have you had much to do with with the, the ballast bow, tanks? The ballast tanks, the Balfour, so the ballast tank on the front. Uh, not with R and LI boats, but back in the days when I used to help out people with race boats and stuff like that, and I had a, a Dutch 23 foot, I think it's called a Bagheera. It might have been, I can't remember what it was. Huge, big, orange thing. Similar sort of length to this, slightly longer. Um, very, very pointy, and that had a ballast tank in. And it's just amazing the difference that it makes. Does it know, really? Oh gosh, if you've got a, a, a real rough sea with lots of chop, it's not, doesn't help you really with big waves, but if you've got a lot of chop and you just want to stuff the nose in and carry on going cut quickly. through, you're going to get yeah, wet, absolutely. but but she's going to cut through it. That's it, yeah. And it just and it also will allow you to to have a little bit more positive trim without the boat starting to pour poise as well, which I think the weight of this you're probably not going to experience any pour poise. But uh, yeah, I mean they're there, so it's daft not to not to have them all up and working. Do you think that the weight of the engine is going to make much difference to us when we're out? The fact that they're now a heavier engine on the back? If it were a, a slightly lighter built boat, then that would definitely have been a consideration. But for two reasons. One, most, most importantly, you've got your ballast tanks. So you can, you know, you can put Fill around. a couple of hundred kilos in there if you wanted to in no time at all. Um, yeah, I think they say it fills in about 35, 40 seconds yeah. you can fill it or something like yeah. that. So and that, it sucks it from the rear, doesn't it? Yeah, there's just a little, a little scoop that just comes down, and when you're moving along, you have to be moving through the water. Sure, sure. Uh, it just scoops it up and dumps it into the ballast tank. Yeah, great. And then the opposite function of the lever dumps it all out. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that's that's one reason that the extra weight didn't bother me, and the other reason is the the, the weight of the boat itself. Uh, it's just a, a, a big, solid, heavy boat. I mean, there's so much fiberglass in these. For the length of the boat, I think they're probably the most robust built, certainly, boat in the UK. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and it's, you know, that's why they're so well sought after, because they're not built to a price, they're built to a specification. That's the beautiful thing about getting old, old R and like it. Yeah. I think these ones originally, they only coated the top of this, um, but this had a full new deck put in, and they did underneath it, like they right. did the, the amount of 84. This one it should be um, fairly fairly good. So uh, well, I mean that, that was the first comment that I made. So I saw it. How the hell did you get them in this condition? Because they're usually much much more tired than this. Really? Oh, the best condition one I've, I've seen. In, yeah, in great. Public yeah, definitely. great. Get a little bit of a clean up on the tubes, and, and, and it should be lovely, won't you? Yeah, yeah they yeah, should be good. Get her in the water and give her a good thrashing. And we also had AIS on this, so we've yes. now got the radar, which yeah. the seventy fives never had. AIS as well. Yeah. Uh, we had to move the radar repeater, didn't we? Because it was going to be in the way for, um, you know, for, for the engines. Just, just we thought it might be in the way, so we moved it just in case. I mean, it is tight with those in there, but, um, it is, yeah. but you know, it does look like, uh, you know, it's, it's okay. I don't know where we might put that. I think I might just either put it a little bit higher or maybe move it around the side a bit. But I'll find somewhere to put that back on. But um, yeah, I would, I would fix it onto one of these panels on the side here. Would you? Yeah, I think that would be fine. Yeah. Either that or just forward of the VHF aerial. And like also, we, as we was talking about earlier, I mean this obviously has got the self-writer on it and I was always quite adamant in keeping the self-writer on it. Um, but um, people said to me, if you um, if you need a self-writer, <laughs> there's, there's, there's something wrong anyway. You're in, you're in, serious, you're in serious trouble. But, uh, so I think even though I wanted to keep it standard, I'm going to take them off now and then have it so I can store um, our fuel for the journey. I think I'm going to need at least at least empty cans, I'm going to need somewhere to store our cans so we can get our fuel. Yeah. Um, because at the minute, I mean, even though they're not a bad size boat, there isn't that much room when you get sort of 20 days of gear on it. That's <laughs> it, absolutely, you yeah. Know, it's going to be You're going to stuff tied down all over the deck, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. But uh, mate, I mean, I'm I'm really so pleased with what you've done and, I'm, and I know it's, it's it's been a bit of a headache um, for this man and he's him and well, his team have done such a great job, but um, I really do appreciate what you've done. It was a bit of a labour of love and for a normal job we probably would have said no to it but you know it's an rnli boat we, we try and help out with those whenever possible and it's you know it's it's for charity so 
Exactly, yeah, exactly. And we're trying to uh, raise some decent funds. Is, uh, is the is the plan, and have fun on the way round. Yeah. Which is uh, which is our is our, our, our real goal. Yeah. So, um, but look, Simon. Thanks, mate. No problem at all. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for really coming appreciate to us. It. Thanks very much. And if you guys, if you want to have anything like this done, this is the guy you want to see. Probably not bring him a 75 like this one, because I don't think he'll be too pleased. He might tell you to do one. But uh, but yeah, if you've got any problems, or even if you want to buy, you do new outboards. That's don't you sell yeah, new outboards? Yeah, we specialise in, in new outboard engines. Uh, we'll, we'll move somewhere around a thousand units to see it. Seriously? Do you? Yeah, there are thereabouts uh, from all the different makes, and we, you know, we, we do a good job. We try and keep everybody um, treated well and looked after the, the way that we would like to be treated. That's kind of our modus operandi. When my dad started the business 45 years ago, I was going to say because your dad is yeah, still high marine, yeah. so it's just your dad. Yeah, yeah that's he, right. He, he kind of he taught by example the right way to do business, and that was treat everybody well. And these days, you know, with the internet and you know. TripAdvisor or whatever it is that you, you you day to look at, whether it's Google reviews or whatever, doing good business, ethic, ethical business is good business these awesome. days, more than ever. So awesome. yeah, yeah. What, what goes around comes around. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And on that note, should I pay my bill? Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, guys. <laughs>
on the back end with the engines. So um, she's got a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of a rear end bounce going on. So speeds aren't quite what I anticipated. So 45, 50 is about all we can do. I don't know if you can hear when it bangs. And we're not quite sure what the bang actually is. Um, but she's definitely heavy on the rear end. So we're just taking it slow and steady. And it doesn't help. He's trying to put a Land Rover and a trailer in the size of a Mini. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, honestly, my nerves are through the roof. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty stressful. But we're getting there slowly but surely. We're slowly getting her home. So check in later and we'll tell you if we made it or not. <laughs> noise, the crunching noise is. Do you know where it might come from? Maybe it's the casing of the outboards creaking on something. No. Well, that was one of the most stressful journeys I have ever had. Seriously, very towel heavy. So it took me seven hours with traffic around Manchester, seven hours to get home. So skewed the, uh, excuse, can't even speak. Uh, excuse the crudity of this part of the video, but it's very, very late. Seven hour journey. Cup of tea. Uh, I really need to go home and go to bed. But she's home safe, and uh, now we can start tidying up. So yeah, bedtime. <laughs>